happy to be with you today. Yeah. Thank you. You know, I heard from so many of you about how you missed me over the summer, and really, it was mutual. Even though I was enjoying the opportunity to relax and recharge, I missed all of you. And, and I'm so happy to be back here. The, when I was listening to Reverend Kaya this morning, um, the, the idea came into my head, the, the quote from the Gospel of John, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and there was nothing but the Word. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And I thought, and the word was made music and dwelt among us. And then I kept thinking, and the word was made community and dwelt among us. That energy that is referred to as the word, the word is the expression, the expression of divinity, of all that is, is sitting right now in your seat. Just close your eyes for a minute and take that in. Let it be your I am. I am the Word made flesh. I am the love that flows through all that is. I am the life force of the universe. And as we come together in this space, all of us in our empowerment as I am are creating something amazing. We are creating a community where we are reminded of who we came here to be. The embodiment of love, awakened spiritual consciousness, that's what we're doing here. Have you ever thought of that as a snappy answer when somebody says, hey, how you doing? What's up? <laughs> What's up? I'm embodying love. <laughs> I'm, I'm awakening. <laughs> but that's what we're doing here. And the beauty of community is that we do it better together. We, we, have, we have blind spots. It's like you're driving down the road, and you know how you have a blind spot that you can't see, and that's why you have those mirrors to help you so that you don't just slide over into somebody? We're the mirrors. We're the mirrors so that we all can see what is and what might be. There was, um, there's a beautiful book that I'm reading by Mark Nepo all about belonging. And he talks about the cave paintings so in, I think it's Chauvet in France, uh, there are these caves, and the carbon dating says that the paintings have been going on for 32,000 years. I mean, that's just, that's so mind-boggling that someone 32,000 years ago was painting something. But the thing that f is fascinating is that it wasn't just a painting, and it's 32,000 years old. It's a process of painting that began 32,000 years ago. And the carbon dating shows that there's, it continued to be painted on. So somebody, you know, kind of like graffiti, not that I'm encouraging that, but, <laughs> but when there's graffiti, People don't just do it and then say, ah, there's my graffiti work of art. You know, m more people add to it, right? And that's what it was like with the cave paintings. 
So here's somebody has been inspired by something. And, and it was so present, they had to express it. And they did something in the cave so that others could see it. And then roll along, I don't know, months, years, hundreds of years. Somebody else comes in and adds to that. And then, and then adds again. And that's what spiritual community is like. We're like this unfinished painting that belongs to no one and is created by everyone. Each person here has a contribution. There's no spare parts. There's no spare parts. Each one of us is so important. What is the peace that you are going to add to this beautiful community. I was talking with Naomi before the service. Um, Naomi is a new member, and when you join this community, there's an application, and one part of it is, how would you like to contribute? There are all these ways that you could serve here. I think she checked almost all of them. <laughs> and so I was sort of having the, can we narrow this down a little bit conversation with her? And, and she was saying that, well, there's some things that were on the list that just set her soul on fire. And then there were other things that, well, they definitely don't set her soul on fire, but, you know, it's a community and we all need to pitch in. And, and so that's, that's the beautiful dance of community. There are some times, like, for example, Carol needs some help cleaning up her trailer. And I don't know, maybe there is somebody here who their soul is set on fire by the idea of cleaning. <laughs> I, I'd like to know you. Are you here? Would you raise your hand? <laughs> Okay, established. None of us like cleaning. So, so there are times we just decide we're going to help because this is part of our community and somebody needs help. But in terms of the ongoing, how we serve on a regular basis, we want to pick something that sets our soul on fire that gives us so much joy. So, like, I love to get up here and talk. I actually do love that. And so, for those of you who are sitting in your seats and thinking, you'd have to kill me before you got me up here. And, and really, statistically, more people are afraid of public speaking than of death. So, I know that there have to be some of you in this group who really would prefer that we just kill you now if, if the choice where you have to come up and speak. But I love it. For me, this is a get to, not a have to. On the other hand, administrative stuff, <laughs> I mean, I can do it. <laughs> I have done it. It takes... I remember one time I was putting together the program that we were going to, and it's like, okay, I can type just fine. That's not a problem. But layout and all this thing, and I'm, I'm typing it up and printing it out and cutting and pasting and trying to figure out how could you put this together, and it's like my mind just won't work. And I finally give this to Pamela, and Pamela says, oh, no problem. And like a half an hour later, she's done the whole thing. And, and it's just like my mind can't even comprehend that. So I am not the person who should be serving as the administration. <laughs> you know, it's just a not good idea. So there are all these beautiful people in here who actually like that stuff <laughs> and are good at it. And so they do that. 
And what that creates in our community, if, if you are serving and doing something that sets you alight, then we create a community that is full of light. On the other hand, if you say, well, somebody's got to do it. I guess it'll be me. <laughs> Then we, we have a community of Eeyore, you know, it's like, mmm, mmm, mmm. and we don't want that, because that's no fun to be, I mean, we know those people, right, that they live like Eeyore, and, you know, they're part of the community, so we're nice to them, but they're not fun <laughs> to be around. It's true, right? <laughs> okay, we still miss you. <laughs> <laughs> I received the most beautiful compliment. I, I just felt so humbled and grateful from someone who was saying that she, she knew a lot of people in kind of the spiritual realm that they're like oh, and they're just light and you know up here flitting around and and she said they're it's kind of hard to be around them and it's because they're not connected to the earth in any way and and she was saying that that was what she experienced with me is more like the anemones in the bottom of the ocean you know and, and just it's like all the parts, and this is, what, this is what we're called to as a spiritual community. We're called to embrace the all of us. So it starts with ourselves. It starts with the parts of ourselves that, you know, we're not, we're not so hot on. And if you say, oh, tell me about yourself, you don't usually lead with that. It's like, oh probably find out eventually, but, but not because I'm going to tell them. You know, those parts, those parts we have to love. And as we look out there at the mirrors around us, there are the, the people that we see that it's like, oh, it's so much fun to hang out with them. But then there are the other people that we just don't feel the same groove. And then there are the times in people's lives when they're not feeling so good. I went to visit Charlotte in the hospital last week, and she did not have her happy face on. <laughs> <laughs> and, and there was, you know, the, the doctors were coming in and saying, so how are you doing? I'm hurting. You know, she was hurting. She was in a lot of pain. And that's not something to just pretend that we're not. There are times when we are just flat out in pain. And we have to embrace that and care for that. And we have to do that for each other. And that's what I love about the spirit groups, is it puts us in small groups where we can cheer each other on and we can we can hold each other when something's going on. Because in this big group, even though this feels like so much fun, doesn't it? At least for those of us who are extroverts. The <laughs> introverts, I'm sorry. Uh, but but it's, it feels good, but we don't get to know each other. And the only way to create community is get to get to know other people. You don't have to know every single person but you need to know somebody. Some, some of us remember middle school and even worse, middle school dances, right? <laughs> Standing against the wall. And I don't know if you were more hoping somebody would ask you to dance or hoping they wouldn't, but you felt like you were, the, you were invisible, right? I did meet one person once that actually enjoyed middle school and had friends, but mostly, 
mostly that was not true. And so we don't want that to be a big middle school do-over here. We want, we want this to be a place where people know your name and people care about you and people express that. And so spirit groups is a way that that happens. And we, ha we have other groups as well that you can join in, but get yourself in a group. Do something that's smaller than this. Invite friends. You know, like when you say, do you want to come, if, especially if you use the word church instead of spiritual community, do you want to come to church on Sunday? How many of you have a friend who would say, oh, I don't think so, right? Yeah, a, a lot of you. A lot of us have friends that really don't want to come to that, but they might come to a small group. And maybe someday they'll come here, but even if they don't, our mission is to embody love and awaken spiritual consciousness. Our mission is not fill the seats. And so we have all these different ways that we can express our mission and create community where we can have those mirrors so that nobody goes through life without the mirrors in a conscious way. Let's remember as we go through this week that we are the Word made flesh. This community is the Word made flesh. And whatever, whatever it is we have to do, to make this community come continually to life because it isn't an arrival thing. We didn't say, okay, check, we created community. It isn't static. It's an ongoing every day, just like your families. Yes, at some point, we created children, if we did, and there they are. But it doesn't stop there, does it? even when they're older, right? <laughs> For those of us who are older, we're still nourishing our children and they're nourishing us through all the aspects that it involves. 